It is kind of like, like, like the same man, no, 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 and it's just different name for the same kind of thing. And last but not least, I just want to say to all the men who saw me, call me, and ask for a piece of cake, I'm baking this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Join us Fridays at 8 on GBN Television, K105 FM. G Let me say a hearty good uh, Thursday morning to those of you listening to Classic Radio 105.5, 105.9 on the FM dial. Those of you viewing us this morning via GBN TV, whether it's Channel 7, Channel 11, Channel 20. Those of you via our social media platforms, our Facebook page, YouTube channels. Good morning and welcome to another edition of To The Point. I'm your host, GT, and I'll be with you for the next hour. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, on Thursdays, we have a little bit of twist in the program format this morning. Uh, you know, usually on a Thursday, we do enter the, entertain various departments within the Royal Grenada Police Force, but uh, there's just a bit of a little switch up this morning. I don't, not be, not to, to say that my guest is a member of the Royal Grenada Police Force. No, she, she's absolutely not. Did I say she? Well, <laughs> I'm certainly going to introduce her shortly. So once again, good morning and welcome to this edition of To The Point. It's the first day of February, which means we're inside of a brand new month. Yeah. Mm, think about it. Just a couple more days we'll be celebrating our anniversary or 50 years of anniversary 50th anniversary of independence uh, let's go over and say good morning i think i have said enough in, on this side let's say good morning to my guest this morning as i introduce her let's say good morning to dr Cantia mitchell hall uh, she's a lecturer at the ue uh, mona campus let me say good morning to dr uh, mitchell hall good morning to you doc how are you doing this morning and welcome Good morning, Glenn. Thank you for having me. And uh, I feel quite at home. Um, you know, this is a homecoming for me. Good morning also to your listeners and to your viewers. Greetings, my Grenadian people. And it's lovely, lovely to have you. Before we get into the, the conversation this morning, tell me something about, I, I've been asking, I did ask, of course, uh, Dr. Wendy Grenade the same question yesterday. Tell me something about yourself. Let's tell me something about, you know, Candy. I don't mean to get the whole bio this morning, but something. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, I, what I'm, I'm quite proud of is yes. that I am a daughter of the soil from St. Patrick's. Oh. I'm actually from... Monfendu. I studied history at the Cave Hill campus for a BA and a PhD. And then, of course, uh, I was employed at the UE Mona campus here in Jamaica. I am a lecturer of Caribbean history, heritage, and memory. And uh, I am Grenadian and Caribbean to the bone. <laughs> Happy to know that. Happy to know that. So welcome again, daughter of the soil. Thank you. I like to know that. So our conversation this morning, we, we focus on the topic. Um, it's one people, one journey, one future. Um, the history, as you mentioned, you lecture, you lecture history a lot, memory and nation. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Let's kick it off with the history. Now, Grenada will be celebrating 50 years as an independent nature, nation. Sorry. Um, the history of this. Let's, 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 where, where would we start if you want to get into this where we get into this conversation where would you like to start yeah that's an excellent question glenn at the beginning um for me 
Grenadian independence, that, that, that sense of freedom was forged hundreds of years ago with our indigenous peoples, our indigenous Grenadians who fought against uh, colonization. And it is that kind of resilience that runs in the bloodline of uh, our Grenadian people. So for me, even when I look at the independence song, I read it as, as history text because it opens us up to a world of our historical experiences, that path, that human experience across time and space. It begins with the lush Grenadian landscape, which to me is an ode to the indigenous peoples who lived in Grenada. They called it Kamahon. That was their Kamahon, a place of paradise, of peace and tranquility, the place for the brave ones. And so for me, it is there that we have to start when we think about independence. It is. It, it was always unfinished and it looked differently across different timelines. So during the beginning of colonization, for example, it looked like Kalinago resistance. And by the way, they were Kalinagos and not Caribs, our first indigenous Grenadians, right? Who 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 lived in the space and, and who gave it meaning and who were connected to the land and who had their social and their political and their economic systems and who had set that that place, Grenada, Camahon, on a sustainable economic development path. They had diversified the economy. They had trading relations with South America. And when Columbus came, he saw them with some gold alloys, and he thought, hmm, is it really true that what the Africans told me were true? What had they told him? They were trading with some native island peoples and they were trading gold and so on. So it is it is it is a way in which we have to look at independence as a long struggle of the Grenadian people. We turn to the enslaved Africans, right? In the throes of colonialism, they resisted oppression and they they they, they, they their sense of identity, they ensured that they passed it along, that they found ways to resist culturally. Cultural resistance is also part of our Grenadianness and what, what elevates our Grenadian identity invariably in different ways, right? So even when we look at, for example, the Carnival Cancellation Act, and youth activism then, the youth said, no, there is no way that you're gonna cancel carnival. So on the 1st of August, 2020, they came out in a jab jab aesthetic, a symbol of resistance, a symbol of emancipation, a symbol of their freedom. And then of course, we have the decolonization movement with the people like uh, William Galway Donovan, right? The first federalist, T.A. Marichaud, the great, Grenadian T.A. Marichal, the father of West Indies Federation, all on the path to decolonization and carving out a sense of their freedom and their independence. And then, of course, we have Herbert Blaise and the father of independence himself, Eric Gary, who would ensure that he was vehement, that he was not going to give up until this little island was free politically, and otherwise, of course, we know there is a lot of contestation around um, independence in 1974. But the, 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 the point at hand is that it was forged because someone saw it as quite critical to distancing ourselves, creating a rupture from the colonial master and beginning to carve out our own destiny, our own future and our own journey. And then, of course, we had a revolution, the spirit of revolution in the Grenadian people, unfolding as a, the dawn of a new day, a, a, a so-called juve, a way in which the Grenadian people would again control their own destinies. And then, of course, uh, we, we live within a post uh, revolutionary post independent very very a sense of a modern political culture in grenada that certainly shapes our grenadianness so when we think about the beginning of independence we have to return as the independence song does to the historical text our ancestral memory, our forebears, the indigenous peoples, the enslaved West Africans, those within 
the decolonization movement, our politicians, our political spokesmen who went out there in, uh, I mean, on, on, on the large scale and said, yes, we are small, but we are a people with the spirit of resilience. We have an identity. And so for me, when we talk about independence, it must be reparative. We must not repeat some of the mistakes uh, that we've often had to when we were colonized, and that is denying uh, the memories of the past and the history of our forebears who got us where we are today. The story of independence is a story of uh, where it began and who it began with. And certainly 1974 is a, a very modern um, part of our Grenadian history, where it is the age in which we are trying to decolonize and the, the name that is going around is independence. But independence could certainly look like emancipation. It could certainly look like even before that, calling out resistance to systems of oppression, um, so certainly for me, this is where we have to begin. A mouthful, um, Glenn, but I just wanted to, 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 to sort of um, show that, that long trajectory in terms of our history of where we must begin to understand the Grenadian resistive ethos, for example. Um, we are uh, people who resist oppression and we do so culturally. In many ways, uh, for me, when I study the Grenadian human experience, I see a lot of cultural resistance, All right. especially in the contemporary. You, you, you focus a lot on, on resistance for some reason or the yeah. other. The resistance as part of our history, it, it, it leads up to our independence. Why, why, why did the resistance part seem to be you know, the dominant factor there for us a whole lot? Yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent um, question, Glenn. Resistance would be the dominant factor because we were a colonized, oppressed peoples. European colonization in the Caribbean was an event from the 15th century with the arrival of Christopher Columbus, who arrived but did not discover because he came upon indigenous peoples and the Grenadian indigenous peoples in particular, the Kalinago, who had inhabited the land for 1,800 years before the coming of Columbus. And so resistance has to be part of the story of independence because one dominant power, uh, the colonizer, would impose formal political control, but also cultural and psychological control. Uh, they would imp impose their culture, right? They were certainly invasive cultures. And because of that, uh, the mass of the Grenadian people who would look indigenous, at which point in their history we're talking about, enslaved, who would look as a post-emancipation people, who would look as T.A. Marishals, and then, of course, the revolutionaries, and then, of course, our post-revolutionary Grenadian peoples. And so it has been one continuous journey of resistance from colonization. 1974 is important in this because uh, it is in 1974 that we said, well, we are at a head in terms of our resistive journey, and we are going to break away politically, and then we would find our identity and our Grenadianness because we are charting our own destiny. And so resistance is part of the story of independence. Without resistance, we would not have had emancipation. And certainly before that, the triumph of indigeneity, the indigenous people's triumph, resisting colonization, we will not surrender. We will jump to our debts in freedom and in power and in victory, but we will never surrender, right? And then, of course, the enslaved Africans and all of their resistance, um, some on a grand scale, some as simple as poisoning the master. Or, or, or passing along their heritage, insisting that they were going to pass along their culture. That is also cultural resistance. And then, of course, uh, our contemporary Grenadian society, in which there are still ways in which we have to navigate our independence and Grenadianness, what it means. And we would see youth activism within this question of our more present resistance movements. And this is why I like to talk about resistance mourning, the, 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 the cancellation of carnival through that carnival cancellation celebrations act, where the young people said, no, we know emancipation. We know freedom. 
we know our independence and we know what have made us free. It is our West African identity and cultural expressions. So we are going to continue to perform memory because that is what the Grenadian people do. We perform resistance and we resist, right? And we are going to perform memory now through our jab jab aesthetics. Why? Because we're black as ever and we're going to be black forever. And we know that our blackness is part of our Grenadianness. It is part of our freedom and our sense of independence. And I think that is why the focus on resistance comes out so clearly, because there can't be an independence without indigenous resistance, without the, the resistance of the West Africans. And of course, without the resistance of our political figures, like the T.A. Mary Shows and the Eric Gary, and resistance again, resisting that kind of independence during revolution. And so this is why resistance is certainly part, a dominant part of what makes us cultural resistance, especially Grenadian and elevates our Grenadianness. It is what makes us unique um, within the Caribbean. Let me also ask you, why is it that important that we, we, we remember our history that, that has led us from then to now? Why is it that important to remember that? We, we keep a, a strong memory of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We It's important that we do that because we have been oppressed and we have been robbed of our identities from West Africa. Glenn, we have lost so much and we have lost and we sometimes we do not know what we have lost. And so it is uh, critical that uh, we return to history, that sense of history. It provides a, a sense of identity. It elevates identity. It helps us to understand where we are within our human experience. History does that. It elevates our consciousness as well. Without history, we have no sense of where we're located. We're just here. And so history provides that kind of avenue for us. It locates us where we are, and it helps us to see where we've been in the past. And it also helps us to chart our futures, where we want to go. And so it is important that our people understand our history, that you are not here individually by yourself. You are not struggling by yourself. You are part of a collective. You're part of a collective identity and a collective memory. And it means that you are resilient. You have in your bloodline strength. You have in your bloodline resistance. You have freedom in your bloodline. And even while we were an oppressed peoples, it was still important for the West Africans to remember that sense of history from West Africa. And that is why they were they insisted on passing along that rich history and memory to to their descendants. Oh, and they did so. They did so through their storytelling. They did so through all of the little folklores that we have, the Laja Bless and the Sukuya, right? They did so through their, their expressions, how they expressed themselves and how they performed memory, like through our, our masquerades, our short knees and our jab jab and our vehicle. And so history is what says to us, you belong here. You are part of of a collective. You are connected to the past and the past stories of your Grenadian um, sense of identity. You are not just here now. You didn't just get here right now. You, you, you are part of this community who is on the path of a continuous journey towards one sustainable development, which is what we've lost during colonial co colonization. Colonization set us on a distorted development path, which is which which to me is one of what I call the ironies of history, because the indigenous peoples had set us on an autonomous development path, having been able to sustain their populations for 1,000, almost 2,000 years, 1,800 years before the coming of Columbus. They had a diversified economy and strong trading relations with other communities throughout the Caribbean and the Americas. And so it is important for us to always know that this land, our island in the sun, our beautiful Grenada, lush, green, with happy, friendly people, that we are here because of those who forged that path for us years and years ago. 
Oh man, I can suddenly listen to the girl lesson all but wish I was one of your students in your class. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we drew for a break. Let's let's take that break, and when we come back, we suddenly have much more to discuss as we go through the sphere this morning. Uh, stay with us, folks. We have uh, Dr. Candy uh, Mitchell Hall with us this morning, a lecturer at uh, UWE uh, uh, Mona Campus, and uh, we talking this morning the history, the memory, and the nation. We come back with more after the break. Stay with us, folks. Don't touch your dial. Real. Family, it's always exciting when lottery players get together. Now the lottery games are joining in the fun. Check out the multiplier family of InstaCash games. Five times the cash at two dollars, ten times the cash at three dollars, and twenty times the cash at five dollars. On your tickets, match any of our numbers with any of the winning numbers and win the prize below that number. There's more. Multiply your winnings up to five times, ten times, or twenty times more. Winning is easy. Play Monday to Sunday, there are no draws to wait on. Win instantly. It's the multiplier family of InstaCash games with over $675,000 to be won instantly. Don't just buy one, buy all, because family is everything. Must be 18 years and older to play. NLA, making family dreams come true. The Planning and Development Authority of Grenada, PDA, is enforcing regulations to curb illegal, disorderly, and unauthorized development in several locations throughout the state of Grenada. The authority is concerned that structures mainly associated with vending are negatively impacting the environment, has undesirable public health and sanitation consequences, present obstructions to vehicle and pedestrian traffic, can become projectiles during adverse weather conditions, and generally affect the aesthetics of the nation. The PDA will work along with stakeholder ministries and institutions to affect the demolition, removal, and disposal of structures which fall in the category of illegal and disorderly development, commencing January 2024. In this regard, persons who vend in or occupy such illegal structures are advised to secure their personal belongings and have the structures removed ahead of the planned PDA demolition operations. These actions of the PDA have become necessary to safeguard and protect public health and the environment, ensure the safety and well-being of all citizens and visitors, discourage any future disorderly construction, and encourage compliance to regulations pertaining to physical development in the state of Grenada. This is a message from the Planning and Development Authority of Grenada. Listeners, welcome back, viewers, to the point for today, Thursday, the first half of February. With me this morning, I have with me Dr. Kendia uh, Mitchell Hall, a lecturer at the UE in Mona campus. And uh, we're talking this morning. We, of course, our first conversation kicked off with the history. Now we go to the Dr. Kendia. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. We, we want to focus in this segment on the memory, the importance of, of how we remember from where we were to where we are now. I know I always give you the option of, of bringing that out to me, the memory. Let's, let's share uh, with our viewing and listening audience this morning the memory, mm -hmm. what we should remember about ourselves uh, as Grenadians from where we start back then to where we are now. Yeah, that's a really great question, Glenn. I think that memory has to be concrete. I, I, I While it is important to have um, a, a vivid sense of uh, 
where we are now and how we got here. I think one way in which that can be done is when it can be seen. Um, we need monuments and, and memorials, for example, to commemorate all past peoples and their achievements. I think that is one of the ways in which nations remember. And the, the thing about physical inscriptions of, of memory, as they are often called, is that it helps us to recall experiences that we may never have had, but also um, that, that we can certainly see and have a consciousness of those kinds of memory. So sites of memory, um, we have Lippers Hill, um, and there is a monument to the, to, to the indigenous peoples there. Um, that is an important site of memory. And I remember as a child, my, 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 my grandmother's house, my maternal grandmother, um, is is from Sotez, and she lives very close, lived very close to Lippers Hill. So even as a child, when I visited her, we would roam in her backyard, which was virtually that site of of of, of memory. Um, so as a, a small child, I I had a sense it was a natural site of memory then when I was growing up. And later on in the 90s, we would see images um, of 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 the resistance, and then. Um, a monument which would be erected and installed there later on. Um, so sites of memory are important to recollect and to help, especially the younger generations, to ask questions. Who, what does this commemorate? Who is this remembering? Why is it remembering them? We also have other sites of memory in Grenada. Some are natural in that they actually represent the actual kind of history that unfolded there. Talking about like plantation houses, um, estate houses, and so on. Even when they're used adaptively in different ways in the present, it is still a great house. It is still um, a plantation house, for example. It, it, it belonged to this plantation owner. So these are sort of natural sites of memories. But we also have deliberate ones too, concrete memories, deliberate commemorations to our past forebears. And one of which would be our sculpture park at Molinier. We have monuments there that are often seen as monuments to slavery. And of course, we recently installed our, I, I mean, that beautiful cultural repertoire of our memories, Jab Jab, the, the, the I mean, the Laja Bless and the, the, the Veco and the list went on and on and on. Quite important for, for recollection for now, but also for those to come. And that is the thing about memory. It has to be deliberate and it has to be inscribed. And there must also be a kind of um, balancing act, you know, that all figures who played an important role um, within our, our struggle for freedom and independence must be comm commemorated. We have monuments to T.A. Marshall, um, the T.A. Marshall Community College, we have the Marisha Memorial Library. We have T.A. Marisha's house, right? Um, a gem of, of Grenadian-ness um, located on Hubbard Blaze Street. And Marisha is commemorated by a monument there, the Marisha Memorial. These are important. It aids in the conscientization of our Grenadian youth in particular, who may not always have a sense of where they are now, um, and how we got here, but certainly monuments help in sort of sharpening that, right, for the youth. And I'm talking about as as young children, you know, like a, a ten year old who 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 is still trying to find his or herself. You know, who am I? Um, why am I here? Who went before me? So memory is an important part of our struggle. And then, of course, we have our revolutionary memory. Um, it is sometimes uncomfortable for some. For others, it is nostalgic. So there is a sort of balancing act that 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 that, that has to occur when we talk about memory as well. We have memory to the Grenada Revolution. We have memory through the Morris Bishop um, International Airport. We have memory through the Morris Bishop Highway, for example. And there is a bus to Mor Morris Bishop and a plaque to to those who gave their lives as martyrs during the Grenada Revolution, who died as a result of revolution. Now, that kind of memory is also an uncomfortable one, coming on the heels of independence. Although it was popular at first and, and, and in the minds of many, 
I did some interviews uh, some years ago with the youth from Tam CC and the surrounding schools, um, Anglican High um, in particular. And I was quite amazed and quite fascinated by their sense of, of history and memory, that they understood the Grenada Revolution and they understood the ways in which their memories to the Grenada Revolution, some are quite complicated. Um, so that kind of memory is important. It is important because it helps to remind us of how unfinished our struggle for freedom has been. And that is why different groups of people had different ideas of how to forge freedom. They themselves had a memory because during the Grenada Revolution, one of the memories, I mean, and there are many that we saw coming out was that memory of Julian fed on that spirit of resistance and rebellion and that the revolution was in many ways a culmination of the, 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 the struggles of the enslaved ancestors who were not truly emancipated. So within that kind of, of, of memory framework, there was a sense in which revolution was reparative. Of course, as I said, revolution in Grenada has been contested, and that memory has been contested because of the events of the revolution. But it is certainly part of our Grenadianness. With this question of independence, one of the prominent questions that I get asked is what makes us Grenadian? And our memory as a resilient people, I find that Grenadians have a sense of their history. That is something that I, I know of. When you speak to Grenadians, you would talk from now until. And the youth have that sense of activism. Even sometimes, even if they do not always understand how to locate it, they always, they're always part of our repertoire of resistance. And we see them resisting in moments great moments of significance in, in, in that way, carving out their own memory. And so we have the memory of the past, we have the memory of the present and how it is carved out now, and certainly it helps to sort of chart the kind of memories that we're going to leave for those to come. So memory is, is, is certainly quite important. We also right. have monuments to, to Eric Gary, for example, the father of independence. Um, Gary, again, uh, another figure, and that is the thing about some of our heroes. Um, there, there, there is certainly that sense of a contested memory because not everybody agrees that, uh, you know, they should be commemorated. But the, the, what I love about history, and we may never have consensus in any society where there is true democracy, that is a mark of our democracy. So people must have a difference of opinion, right? And these opinions must be respected. What I absolutely love about the Grenadian society is how we have learned to live with all of the memories, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. We have learned to live with the memories of revolution and the rupture of revolution, that new dawn that came to an end and caused a lot of disappointment for some, right? Those who were born after the revolution, who would not have that kind of memory of having lived it because they don't have a living memory of it. But what they do have are concrete memories that they can see. When you go to the airport, you see the Morris Bishop International Airport. When you go to the fort, you see that site of memory and inscription to those who died during the revolution. So memories are important. There is another question, Glenn, and I know that you will ask it, about how do we grapple with that kind of revolutionary memory? Something that was actually a question I have, in, in, of course, <laughs> yes. listed to ask you. But, you know, yes. uh, before you before you even tap on that, on that particular part of that, that you, you mentioned, what would you say would be your most significant, e the most significant era, of course, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, in yeah. terms of our memory, what would you say? What would you say in your, in your, in your, of course, way of, of saying it? But Glenn, that is such a tough question. <laughs> um, to single out one particular moment, I, I, I have to tell you that there, there, there are two moments um, for me. There, we have the moment at emancipation. That was one moment, and then we have. Uh, the moment, well, it's now three, independence and revolution. You asked me for one. Yes. If I'm to think about, if, I, if I'm really to think about it, um, and I will probably face a lot of backlash. But for me, 
as a post-revo baby, I was born in the post-revolutionary period, for me, that definitive culmination of all of the memories, I think, came to a head at revolution. Um, and also because of how the revolution was pitched as that new dawn, a so-called kind of juve. Remember Prime Minister Maurice Bishop's um, speech, his first speech announcing that the revolution was in effect, that, you know, that, that bright new dawn, that sense of a new day. For me, that was a definitive moment because it also occurred in the very, a very present tense time in our memory, so to speak. You know, emancipation and slavery occurred years before, but we still have people living with the memory of revolution, living with the memory of its rupture, living with the hope and all of the possibilities and living with all of its contradictions. I think it was a definitive moment in our Grenadian nest. All of the resistive, resistance movement, freedom coming to a head of people saying within their modern political polity that they want something different, a black nation, a different kind of democracy to control their own destiny. And so I find that at that moment, we saw a different kind of nationalism. And I think that is why that is a definitive moment for me. We saw a kind of revolutionary nationalism. We saw Grenadian children. We saw we, we saw young children who were part of that that movement. And we were we were as small as we are now, a small diaspora of Africa, one hundred thousand people who took up arms and decided and, and and who talked back to the Almighty and powerful United States of America. Yes, we are small. But we are sovereign. And while we will always perhaps depend on external sources because of colonization, that is what started this and opened us up, right, to this kind of fragmented economic path, we would always be sovereign because we are a collective people and we have that spirit of resistance and rebellion. And so for me, that definitive moment culminated in the revolution, the Grenada Revolution would always stand out as, as that part of our Grenadianness that we saw unfolding within the sense of a living history and a living memory. And it was pinned as 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 the ultimate, you know, sign of our Grenadianness. So for me, that would be a definitive moment. And I know that there are many who who, who may agree. Um, and there, there are many who, who, who may not, and that certainly we understand as well. Um, people have different moments that were critical to them in terms of an independent story. You know, the Gary era has always been an important factor that, that led to our independence. He's deemed the mm -hmm. father of in, the father of independence. Mm -hmm. um, his his time, which 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 a, a lot of our foreparents may 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 have, have still remember who was who's alive yes. today, yes. played a significant role. In, in, in our memory today and how we move mm -hmm. forward as an independent nation. That particular era, shape it for me just a wee bit. Um, the pre gary era before independence. Tell me, tell me, tell me about something, how, how that, that folds out for you. Yeah, the, the, the pre gary um, era looks like people like T.A. Marichaud, people who were thinking about decolonizing as well and doing it in a, a, a way in which there would be some form of Grenadianness. So even before we get to Gary, we have to think about T.A. Marichaud or political spokesman going off to Europe, going off to, to London to say that we need representative government. We need a West Indies Federation. And so there was this these movements towards decolonizing. But Federation failed in 1962. And after it failed, then the nation it wasn't quite seen as a nation yet to many, but to me it was, had to think about how to carve out a path to independence. Gary is critical to that because Gary was the one who finally went to Britain and Gary was the one who articulated these demands for independence. Now, Gary, as the first prime minister of Grenada, has to be elevated to that status to which he is given because he was black. And that is the first thing about our Grenadian-ness. We have a lot of blackness and we, we have a lot of black visualization. Like you could see blackness running. Our first prime minister was, was a black man. 
And he did not come from wealth. He came from the bowels of the people. That meant that Gary was a historic figure, uh, a, 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 a heroic figure, sorry, to many, in the minds of many, Gary was Uncle Gary. And Gary also fought against colonization. I remember listening to my grandmother years ago, and she said to me that the land for the landless that Gary gave to her, it was a very important moment um, in understanding who she is. And the reason why land for the landless was important was because the enslaved peoples had been emancipated without land, without reparative justice, without reparation. So when we have Uncle Gary coming in now and he's saying, no, 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 no. The mass of the people who enslaved and who toiled must, must be able to live on a piece of this Grenadian rock that can be their own. That was quite significant. It, it was in many ways Gary fulfilling what emancipation didn't and couldn't. And so Gary would always be very, very important in the Grenadian story to have the audacity to go to represent this very small nation, 100,000 people, dependent on agriculture and our tourism, and to say that we want to move away from Britain, we want to carve out our own future and our own destinies. That is critical in our Grenadian memory. And that is why Gary is the father of independence. It was through Gary's labor that Grenada eventually was granted independence in 74. And it was a moment of victory. It was a moment of triumph. And we see Gary dancing at the independence dance and celebrating that victory on behalf of the Grenadian people. Dr. Kendia, we do for a break. We do for a break. Once again, we're going to take it. When we come back, we're going to get into the, the nation part of, of this conversation. How are we as a nation? How have we have gotten to where we are now? Uh, I'm, my phones are going off the hook. I know they are, they're listening and viewers who may want to ask a question or two, but we certainly sure. do that after we get into another, the next segment. We're coming back. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Grenada, our beautiful pure island, is turning 50. And what better way to celebrate than with an evening that captures our heart, our spirit, our journey. Welcome to Up From Here, an experience of our past, present, and future. Join us at the National Cricket Stadium on Friday, February 2nd, as we revel in a spectacular showcase of Grenadian talent. From our very own shores and from across the seas, our artists are coming home to celebrate with us. Experience the rhythms that rocked our past and melodies that matter our future live bands sensational artists dynamic dancers all on one stage and the best part it's absolutely free gates open at 7 p.m showtime 8 p.m come early bring your family bring your friends let's fill the stadium with our pride our joy our unity 50 years of music talent and creativity this is our moment grenada let's celebrate it's only up from here together stay connected to our social media pages for updates at grenada Nada turns 50. This is 50 years of Calypso excellence as Made in Grenada presents Cal Calypso at 50 featuring Unlucky. I must go back my island this call. The original inspector. So when you see me in the cold mountain, what a plant. Flying Turkey, Lady Sinti, Smokey, Peter Humphrey, Randy Isaac, Woodsman Kelly, Squeezy, Scholar, Black Wizard, and Jamo, and the Hitman Inspector. One stage, one night, Sunday, February 11th, 6 p.m. sharp at the Grenada National Cricket Stadium. Tickets are $50 and are available at Canadian Optical, Town and Grand Dance, Mitchell's Wellness, Grand Dance, St. David Pharmacy, Maxis Bar, and St. Andrew Pharmacy, Calico, Satez, Shai's Bar, Licks and Bites, and GoToFed.com. The hits, the classics, the performances as Grenada celebrates 50 sports. Sponsored by Flow, Brighton and Miners, Antillian Group, Spice Isle Auto Rental, Wayne Mitchell, Glenel, Springwater, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenada Distillers, Makers of Gladscott Rum, Sunday, February 11th, 6 p.m., Grenada National Stadium. This is 50 years of Calypso excellence.
Welcome back, welcome back, listeners. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back, Dr. Candio Mitchell Hall, with us this morning once again. And uh, Dr. Mitchell, welcome back, welcome back, Mitchell Hall. Let me, get, let me, let me make sure I get all the names in. Uh, welcome back, welcome <laughs> back. You, uh, we, we spoke of the history. We spoke the mem. We spoke about the memory. We spoke, and now we want to get into the nation, Grenada, the nation. How does this fits into where we at now, the nation, Grenada? Yeah, the nation Grenada, where are we, who are we? We see ourselves as a spice island. Um, and that is a construct of, of our understanding of, of our economic development path. Um, true nutmeg in particular, right? Grenada produces um, historically um, more than, um, I mean, most of uh, the world's source of nutmeg. Um, at, at least we are second in line to Indonesia. Um, so that is important for us, carving out a sustainable development path as a nation for our people. Of course, Isle of Spice is also a cultural social construct of nation. Um, we have Spice Mass in particular, and it is our annual festival of celebrating the ancestral memories, but also celebrating ourselves and the, the progress that we've made in the present. Um, and then, of course, it is our food. It is uh, also remembering and preserving the past, but it is also negotiating the ramifications of our revolutionary memory. It is part of uh, how we are understanding ourselves as a Grenadian people, how we're understanding our nationness. There is a, a, certainly a way in which the memories and the histories of the past inform our ideas of our national identity and who we are as a Canadian people. The food that we eat, if we turn to a national dish, oil down, it came from our ancestors. The, the one pot dish, everything was thrown into it. And parts of the meat that the planters refused, like the, the parts of the pig, for example, was were used. Salt fish and so on and so forth. Um, breadfruit and, and, and our, our callaloo and, and so on. That is part of the memory of our ancestors that is critical today. And then, of course, nation is forged around cultural, political, and economic constructs. And so we, 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 we must always turn to those ideas of what makes us Grenadian, um, what makes us so unique and distinct. Well, what makes us unique and distinct is that we share, of course, this history, yes, with, with the rest of the Caribbean, but we share something else that some Caribbean nations never had, and that was that we have something else that some Caribbean nations never had, and that is revolution. And so we live with that revolutionary memory. How we negotiate this today, that also means, um, Glenn, that we have to think about reconciliation as a Grenadian people, that we have to heal from the traumas. It means that our healing also includes uh, issues from our recent history. Revolution, it means that healing for us is not just from the traumas of the historical period. That is those that couldn't really touch us because we were distant from it, right? Those that couldn't harm us or paralyze us because we didn't experience it. But to forge nation um, in the present and to think about nation is really a composite. And we have to think about how we live with uh, the memories uh, of our recent history, how we heal from the trauma of revolution and a revolution that eventually came to an end in 1983. How we also grapple with the Americanization, as I call it, of Grenadian culture. Um, the, the America did, some people say invade, some people say it was an intervention, um, but America did come to the Grenadian um, people, and some people say it was a rescue, some people say that it was torture. So we have to negotiate these divides as we move on. Um, and we also have to think about uh, how we're thrown into this global economy um, and what we want within, what we want to receive from the global economy. We are a creative people and culture, the, the orange economy, the cultural and creative industry is the way forward for us as a nation. How we're, how we're centering ourselves 
culturally across the Caribbean and in the diaspora. But when we go into the diaspora, what does Grenadianness mean? What does it what does nation mean? And to many people, it is a culmination of the social, the economic, and the political. It is the food you eat, it is the songs that you sing, it is knowing that you are from a black nation that you are from a people who celebrated black emancipation and who struggled for black emancipation. And to understand what black revolution and black independence look like, right? So that is important for our Grenadian identity. Okay. I say to people all the time that Grenada is one of the nations in the English speaking Caribbean where blackness is commemorated through black expression. And that is true jab jab. You don't see that anywhere else in the Caribbean where black people want to be more black where black people want to highlight their ancestral memories. It is something, when I think about Grenada and I long for Grenada, it is something that I always remember. We don't want to be anything else. We don't want to look like oh, oh, those who oppressed us. We celebrate our ancestral memories. This is part of our nationness and understanding our Grenadianness, and is a critical part of our Grenadian identity. People think about the Isle of Spice. They're thinking about Grenada's carnival, <clears throat> and that is the truth. They're thinking about our nutmeg. They are thinking about how we are known to the rest of the world. Kirani James, our, our sporting prowess, and how we are as a people. It is a warm and friendly people. All of this is part of uh, our nationness. Most importantly, how we preserve the memories from the past will help us to forge a way forward, and it will cement and consolidate who we are as Grenadian people. There is a heightened sense of history in Grenada. How do you know this? All you have to do is to attend Carnival, and you will see our cultural expressions at work and at play. These tell a story, and they are historical texts. It tells the stories of the ancestors, but we have to do more in terms of our education system. We have to rehistoricize and to be quite honest with you, I see and I'm quite thrilled to see some of the efforts that we're making today in terms of having Grenadian history at our secondary schools. And later on, we will see it at our primary schools. History is mandatory. Now, if this isn't something that celebrates or commemorates our, our nationness, I don't know. It is the understanding that as a nation, we cannot move forward until and unless history is taught in our schools. And that is a mark of our independence. It means that we're coming full circle to understand ourselves. And we want our nation's children to understand themselves and to ensure that they're locating themselves within a collective sense of a Grenadian nation, not forged today, but forged through the struggles and the efforts of all of the Grenadians, whether we call them the people who came to the enslaved West Africans or ancestors whose struggle it was not just one of slavery, but triumph and black emancipation as they sought to carve out what freedom should look like. And we see it culminating in independence, in revolution, and who we are today, and ensuring that we are going to pass that along to our future generations. So education is quite important in terms of our national identity and elevating nationness. And we have to do more. You know, I remember as a child growing up, we were taken to the island to see sites. And I was quite happy to hear that my nephew told me recently that uh, he was going to go on an island tour. These uh, are expressions of heightening national identity. Our youth need to see who we are and they need to see us as ourselves. They need to understand us as a people who struggled to be where we are today. The struggle of the ancestors culminates in us and their spirit culminates in us. And we would one day be the ancestors of those to come, right? So it is one continuous journey of nationness when it comes to Grenada. And uh, it, is, it is a way in which we have to think about nation. What makes us nation? What makes us Grenadian? A lot of things. Our Isle of Spice, our nutmeg makes us Grenadian. What else makes us Grenadian? Jab Jab makes us Grenadian. Our revolutionary memory and identity 
makes us Grenadian. Eric Gary makes us Grenadian. Mary Show, father of West Indies Federation, the Grenadian people are a united people. And the Grenadian people love integration because the spirit of T.A. Mary Show runs in the blood of Grenadians, right? It is, of course, also the spirit of Morris Bishop and his attempt, his attempt at, uh, at, at that kind of revolutionary independence, revolutionary emancipation. So Bishop <clears throat> also figures into that. But it is beyond Bishop. It is those figures that we've had after Bishop. It is the work of Keith Mitchell, right? Who we call the nation builder, building up our physical infrastructure. It is the work of Tillman Thomas. And it is the work of Deacon Mitchell taking the nation towards this path, towards its cultural creativity, ensuring that Grenada is positioned in a way that Grenada is a place that the Caribbean people turn to when we want a sense of our Grenadianness, but also a sense of our Caribbean unity, right? And so I feel as if when we talk about our nationness, we're also talking about what got us here to this point to be a nation, which of course involves our history and our memories and how we preserve it and how we pass it along and how we understand that all of our figures, whether in politics, whether in our culture, our social um, activities or our economic um, activities, all sought to improve Grenada. Their heart was in the right place. All right, great. And things right. went wrong sometimes. All right. Dr. Kendi Aokpo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for letting us know what we need to know more about, of course, the history, the memory, and the nation. Uh, now, this segment, folks, that way I will open up the phone lines, uh, 435-2041. I will ask you to keep your comments short and uh, to the point as we take our very first uh, caller. Uh, let me say good morning. Caller, good morning. You're welcome. Morning, uh, morning, GT, and morning, Miss, Miss uh, Richard Hall. I'm very elated for her, con for her, her contribution this morning. I mean, this is the kind of thing we need, not the song bank. Um, but yes. I want to challenge her on a number of things. She highlighted the fact that uh, Gary was black, and I, and I celebrate that. But how do we account for the first governor general being white or BC being Grenadian? And then also, the other question I want to ask, in relation to, yeah, and you did mention about the therapy, the healing, and so on. But in terms of the food, uh, we were fed on a diet, according to some of the nutrition experts in the, in the Caribbean, where we are affected uh, by things like diabetes and hypertension. And the medication that we've been given uh, to, to deal with it have not uh, now working with us. How do we deal with those issues that, uh, as you say, there are certain things that we have to deal with, the reconciliation, all the things. I wouldn't continue because I know there's so many things I could ask. Oh, yes. the last thing is that we have a tendency to romanticize part of our history. I'm not saying that you do that. As it's done in Jamaica with the White Witch of Rose Hall, where yes. it uses a tourism attraction. And I, I, I sometimes I'm wary that we try to do that in some aspect of our history, including Jab Jab. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, Cola. Thank you. Any response to anything the caller may have mentioned that yes. you may want to highlight? Yes, like, right dog, like critical. Caller, I thank you so much and for also your wealth of knowledge. Um, you highlighted the political violence of Gary, and it is that that led to the Grenada Revolution, um, that challenge to Gary's sense of, of independence. Yes, things went wrong when it came to Gary. And... Um, personality politics, for example, a culture of violence. But Gary had inherited that from the colonial powers, and he did not disrupt it. A revolution, we saw, oh, the hopes of revolution, which also ended in violence. And so if you think about it, if I'm thinking about your question of how we're thinking about nation and how we're thinking about our history, we have to ensure that as we resolve issues in our Grenadian society, that we do not continue to perpetuate violence. And I'm talking about intimate partner violence, for example, domestic violence. And so violence looks different to, to different people based on who is committing the violence. I'm saying we have to ensure that we put an end to that, that all any kind of violence, and that we're able to resolve our conflict as a community, as one people, as one family. You also ask about diabetes and hypertension when it comes to our food, and you're certainly correct. 
diabetes and hypertension, based on what I understand and my own research, stems from the colonial period of what we were given to eat. And we were given to eat foods that were high in carbohydrates. And so we have inherited that kind of pathology through our genealogy. And that is why Afro-descended peoples are more hypertensive Oh, and, 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 and more prone to these chronic diseases because it is stemming from the historical period. We need to break that. We need a culture of wellness. And I, I, I want to right here, right now, say that I am happy to see some of the work that is being done in the nation in terms of cultivating that culture of wellness. We need to understand what we're eating. We need to understand our portions. And we need to understand the disease profile that we have. They are chronic and they're historic, but we can we can break it. You can we can change our diet. We can eat healthy. I recently had to do that for myself, and I cannot believe that I am I am I am well again because I decided that I have to change my diet. I agree with you. It is something that we have to talk about collectively, and we certainly need more programs to talk about it. To have a mass education campaign about what we eat and how we we will preserve we will preserve ourselves for the future generation so that we can get the best out of ourselves you also mentioned um tourist attractions and how we romanticize yes this is done in the region because our economic development path has been fragmented as a result of colonization and so tourism and agriculture is a way in which we're able to bring in foreign revenue, especially through heritage tourism. And it is for that reason we see this kind of romanticization. Why is it being romanticized when we know that slavery was horrible and terrible? Slavery was draconian. Why? Because guess what? It is one of the difficulties of negotiating our present independent sovereignties. We still rely on those who colonize us to come in and bring in these foreign revenues because they extracted our resources, developed Europe, right? Exposed us to this global economy from the 15th century and we still have to rely on them because we were underdeveloped in the process. So it is for that reason you mentioned the White Witch of Rose Hall in Jamaica, and, and you're quite right. It is a romanticized lore of a white woman having all kinds of relations with the enslaved males and killing them. That That is packaged in that way because there are groups of people all over the world who love that kind of romantic story. I agree with you that it is not just one side of the story that must be told when it comes to the White Witch of Rose Hall or at any site that we have, any cultural resource that we have that we're managing as part of our heritage tourism. But it is all of the composite stories that must be told, that we must break the silence when it comes to explaining and articulating what our historical past entailed, and that we must not promote this romanticized version. It is quite important that we, we never participate in that. For some people, because the past is still haunting, we've never found a way to negotiate that. They turn simply to what we inherited from the colonial powers, valorizing and elevating their narratives while silencing and in many ways denouncing and demonizing our own narratives. But I agree with you. When you go to a plantation site, we need to hear about who erected the site. It was erected by enslaved labor. We need to hear about how the enslaved peoples were chattelized, branded as cattle, and treated as property with no rights, right? Not just a plantation house and that it is now being used as a wedding site or it's now being used as an entertainment site. But all of our sites of memories must encapsulate all of the experiences of our Caribbean and our Grenadian people. I just want to thank you um, greatly for, for those questions, quite deep questions, I have to say. Right. Thank you so much. We Paula. do have another caller, Dr. Yeah, let's take it. Probably will be our final caller for the morning because we are a bit out over time. Let's take this caller. Caller, good morning. You're welcome. Yes, good morning. Good morning to you and Dr. Candiel. She knows that I admire her. I love it when Grenadians dig and try to find the true story. I just need to ask her when she said she was speaking about we and she referred to West Africa, I would like to ask her if she was born to, let's say, a Ramdani family or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Indian people, would her story be the same? And the next question I want to ask her, 
the struggle for independence was there really a struggle for independence? Because so far, I can name three people who were on the air saying that there was no struggle for independence. It was a process. And what the people went to England for was to discuss what to put in the Constitution. And it, there, were, there were two parties, not two people, as people are going around Gary and Blaze. Mm -hmm. There were two parties that mm -hmm. went up, to this, including Bernard Court, that went up to mm -hmm. discuss what to put in the Constitution. That's the going up to England. Gary's struggle, as they explained, was to stay in power because when he won the election in 1967, he was not the one earmarked to become Grenada's first Prime Minister. So that it was the struggle there to stay mm -hmm. in power to become the first Prime Minister. I will listen to her comments. Doc, you know I love you. <laughs> no, these, so much, are, these are absolutely, um, we couldn't, when it comes to the experiences of the Grenadian people, the contribution of the East Indians are quite important and their memories are quite important. We celebrate Indian Arrival Day. It is just that uh, when we have a very short time, I wish you could come to one of my classes, um, we don't get to talk about all of the experiences. The East Indians have contributed to the Grenadian economy in a very large way and they also inform part of our Grenadian as a matter of fact, our East Indian population um, contribute to our economy in, 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 in ways uh, that we are proud of. Um, they've, they've owned estates, for example, and they've retained black memory too, <laughs> the memory of slavery, which was not their own. But they've bought plantations and they've retained that memory. And they're very critical to our food ways, uh, some of the music, how we speak. Um, and they're integrated within our Grenadian society. So the East Indians are quite important. The story of their arrival, though, is quite different from the majority of of, um, of of our enslaved ancestors. They came through contracts, and it is for that reason um, slavery is often highlighted over the the experience that came thereafter. It it, it, it is not denied. And um, historians and scholars are not denying the memories of the East Indians. It is just that the conditions under which they came to Grenada were quite different from the enslaved Africans who came by force, right? And who came as undocumented people. So their identity wasn't always robbed. And they did not always have to start from zero as the enslaved ancestors in the post-emancipation period. It is for that reason their stories are often highlighted. And Grenada is 90% uh, uh, um, diaspora of Africa. We are 90% Afro-descended. And so there is a sense in which if we have a very small window of time, their stories are often highlighted. Now, if if those of my, 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 my colleagues who know me know that I am not, uh, uh, um, let me put it in this way. I, as I said before, I'm a rebel baby and that I am not a fan of Eric Gary. So if I come and I tell you that Gary, Gary had to struggle in the sense that uh, it was necessary to come up with that constitution for independence. But I, I also mentioned that Gary engaged in personality politics. And yes, we had scholars all over the Caribbean asking, is this independence project for Grenada a myth or reality? Why is it that Grenada wants independence? Is it to elevate a particular political figure, which would have been Gary? And should it have been Gary who secured, quote unquote, secured independence? What about the contribution of the Grenada National Party through Herbert Blaze? And that is a, a very just and fair question. But history is what was. And uh, it would happen that Gary would win that election and Gary would take the nation into independence. Was it a struggle? Can we say that independence was a struggle? Well, the people always struggle for their rights. People always struggle for what they think best suits the nation. It is not struggle in the terms of armed resistance. But it is struggle still because it is struggle in a way of thinking that we want to be a nation by ourselves. That is a struggle to grapple with, contending with your history of being a colonized space and, and, and the sense that you would always be part of this diaspora. You would always be colonized peoples. That is a struggle to say we don't want your British passport. 
we want to cover to our own destinies. It is not armed struggle, but it is certainly mental. It, it, and, and it is deliberate that we want to move away from from the, the colonial powers. Um, I think I've addressed all your questions, uh, and thank you so much for them. All right. We, we do have a final caller that was on hold for a wee bit. I, although I did mention it, the caller before was going to be our last. Let's take this final caller, and uh, we take a wrap and get some closing comments for you. Yes, Mr. This 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 thank you very much. I wish would, this thing would go up to 10 o'clock, um, 11 o'clock. Good morning to your guest, Mr. Telesford. I hope she can hear me. Yes, very, I very can interesting. Hear you, very, very interesting. The two callers raising important questions. This is what I tell you. We need more time for this sort of issues, and they had to be more frequent during, during the year. This one. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of things I'd like to challenge you on, but I wouldn't. I leave that for now. My principal question is as follows: How do we? Reconcile the fact that we claim to be politically independent in this country. In other words, we claim that we are politically independent and sovereign nation state. Mm -hmm. Hence, we were able to go to the United Nations, the OAS, the World Bank, what have you, and what have you. Yet, in this year country, the lands of this country are called Crown lands. We have His, his Majesty's prison, the Royal Grenada Police Force. We swear allegiance to a king and queen, a monarchy. We send our parliamentary reports through the Hansard to the United Kingdom, etc., etc., etc. How do we reconcile these two, my dear sister? Do have a nice day. I love to hear your voice. Have a nice <laughs> Thank day, you, Paula. I love to hear your voice, too. And I love the passion there. Yes, how do we reconcile um, this uh, political independence of, and sovereignty when we're still attached to the colonial powers. And you made some brilliant, um, you gave us some brilliant examples. You, you spoke about Her Majesty's prison and so on and so forth. Crown lands. So when I started off, I mentioned that uh, what we need is reparative justice. We need to, we need reparative justice. And what does that look like, Color? It really looks like moving completely away from the colonial powers and moving from their memories on our landscape, as you mentioned, from their systems of government, from how we teach. It is really about becoming a republic. And that would be the, the very shorthand way of answering your question. You are certainly correct. We started a set of conversations some time ago, um, and it came up again during the time of Trevelyan reparations, incidentally, almost a year ago, right? Um, when the Trevelyan family gave back, um, what was it, 100,000 pounds? They had owned five, six estates on Grenada, and they were compensated for the loss of their enslaved peoples, 34,000 um, pounds, which, of course, today is a figure worth millions and millions of pounds. And we started that conversation of where do we go from here? I think, where do we go? We, we think about reparative justice, that those who colonize us must bear reparations, repair attempt to, they could never repair, right? But we need cultural institutions, and you are correct. We need to have these dialogues for the entire day. And we need people who can have these dialogues for the entire day, right? We need, psycho, we need psychotherapies, right? We, we, we need psychological institutions to help people dealing with their daily traumas, right? Our peoples are, are, are often deprived and dispossessed, and you mentioned that unemployment very high in the Caribbean. We need reparative justice. And we need, finally, finally, it, it, it is in our past and it is in our future. We cannot pin it down to today or tomorrow, but we certainly need to think about uh, becoming a republic. I heard a question at the um, Trevelyan reparations last year, and someone asked Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, what are we doing? Are we going to think about be becoming a republic? And his answer was, the Grenadian masses, the Grenadian people must come together and decide. In other words, he's saying, as the prime minister, at any moment, when our people are ready, I am ready. And that tells us a lot of how we have progressed and matured in our democracy. And the last point I will make is that 
because we were colonized, you see, because of our history, we would be tied to the colonial powers and we would depend on external intervention within our economies. Why? Because they extracted our resources and they underdeveloped us and they connected us with Europe from since the 15th century. You see, how do you rupture that kind of economic control? I, I, I take very kindly to your views on the poli in ensuring that we become independent politically and otherwise, that we do not have relics and remnants and the legacies of Britain in Grenada. Some of our street names, I've heard people calling for a total recall of our street names that still represent um, Europe. But there is another side to the argument, and I, I leave you with, with that side. And that side to the argument is that we cannot always remove the part of ourselves that were colonized. It would always be part of our history. So it's like your, your surname, my surname, Mitchell, was the surname of a plantation owner, right? That is my Grenadian surname. How do we go back and do we rename ourselves? So, so it, it, it is very complex. But the salient point that you've made about how we think about forging our political independence even more and cementing it, it means that we have to think about reparative justice and we have to think about becoming a republic. Dr. Kendi, I want to thank you a whole lot for being on the program this morning. And I certainly know that our listeners and viewers this morning uh, did get a mouthful. And uh, and I know they would have absorbed a whole lot of what you mentioned. And uh, probably going to have to have you come back once again, if time permits. Absolutely. Um, any you. closing any closing comments? I know you have to run. Uh, I know you so you did mention you have a class coming up. But um, any anything anything for if you want to say before you take a wrap, take a wrap this morning? Absolutely. Um, the way forward our orange economy. Um, the government of Grenada opened quite recently the cultural and creative industries, and there is now a, a very official way in which our, our culture is going to be managed. And I don't mean to say that it wasn't managed before, but when it is taken in hand that the, the orange economy is part of our Grenadianness and our Grenadian identity, it is a way in which our, our government is positioning Grenadian cultural expressions within the region and also um, globally. I also want to think about the culture of wellness for Grenada. I'm thinking about how we resolve a conflict and rupturing violence, whether we are the ones who are doing that those violent acts, so on an individual level, but also on a community-based level. And to continue to think about ways in which we ought to preserve our memories. And finally, I would say, we certainly have to think about our education system. As that caller mentioned some time ago, we have to really think about what we're teaching our children. And we certainly need Grenadian subjects, Grenadian subjects being taught to our primary schools from a Grenadian lens so that our young children from very early on have a deep understanding of who they are and how important they are um, within our Grenadian memory. And that would be some of my, my last points that I would make. I, I also think that while some of our cultural expressions might be contested, I want you to look at it that way. Like Jab Jab, for example, and it is a symbol of resistance. It is a symbol of emancipation. Look at it that way. Many people come to Grenada just to see Jab Jab because they want to come to a nation to see a place where blackness is elevated. What that means is that Jab Jab is quite important to Grenadian memory. The revolution is important to Grenadian memory. We just have to think about ensuring that we have a full understanding of what it is, whether we want to celebrate it or whether we want to look at the ills of it. But we understand it was important in shaping us as a people, and it is part of a resilient Grenadian identity. Dr. Candia, thank you once again. Have yourself a wonderful day and uh, best wishes. And if I don't tell you again, happy independence. Thank you so much, Glenn. Best wishes to you and happy independence when it comes. Thanks so much to your viewers and your listeners. Thank you once again. All the best. Hey, folks, that's how we take a wrap for this edition of To The Point for today. Uh, join us again for the edition. That's where we say goodbye. Have a good one, folks.